Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. In this video, I'm going to show you a lot of the things that I do when I first set up a project. This will be helpful if you're using Path Tracer or high-end rendering or virtual production. So let's just jump in. So first, I'm going to go to Film, Video, and Live Events, create a new one with virtual production, choose Ray Tracing, and create. The first time it does this, it's going to take a while for it to recompile shaders. So go grab a coffee, and I'll be right back. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Edit, I'm going to open up Plugins, Edit, Project Settings, Edit, Editor Preferences. Okay, so I'm going to go to my Plugins and I'm going to search for any plugins that I want to be enabled. So HDRI Backdrop should already be enabled. It is. Let me look up Off World Live. This is something I use for getting Spout. You may not need that. And I'm also going to look for Substance. I use Substance a lot, so I'm going to put, enable that. And whatever other plugins you might use, go ahead and enable now because you'll have to restart anytime you do any changes. Let's go over to Project Settings. I'm going to scroll down to Engine and then Rendering. Go to Global Illumination. Make sure that Lumen is enabled. Make sure that the reflection method is Lumen. And then make sure Hardware Ray Tracing is enabled. I also want Ray Trace Shadows, Ray Trace Skylight. Make sure that Nanite is enabled. That should be good for project settings. We go to Editor Preferences. I'm going to search Auto Save. This is a personal preference, but I like to change this to 30 minutes because I save often enough. If I don't know exactly what sky I want to use, I like to actually add them all in at the beginning and then figure it out later. So I've already enabled my HDRI backdrop, so I can go up here to the Plus Lights HDRI Backdrop. I'm going to go ahead and move it up to this environment folder. So all the lighting is in the environment folder. I'm going to turn it off for now. I'm also going to go to my library. I'm going to search for dynamic, ultra dynamic sky. This is also one that I like to use a lot. I'm going to add that to my project. I'm going to go to settings here. Make sure that engine content is here. And then I'm going to go to my content folder, ultra dynamic sky blueprints. I'm going to add my ultra dynamic sky right to the scene here. And move that up to environment. And then I can decide later, um, I should decide soon which, which light I want to use, which sky, because obviously they're going to get on each other's nerves if I'm using them all at the same time. But either way, if I'm not sure, a lot of times it's good to start with all of them because it's got to prepare shaders for them anyway, so just start with whatever, and then I can always come back and choose that stuff later. Okay, I'm going to go to my post-process volume. I'm gonna come down to exposure, and I'm going to change the metering mode to manual. I'm going to uncheck this box, and now I can use this slider to just get a base exposure, and I can do this manually. If this is not changing things, you need to make sure that the game settings is on, which is just using the post-process volume settings here. I might use my camera settings, but for now, I'm not gonna worry about it. Under global illumination, I want to check the lumen box. And then under lumen global illumination, I want to increase some of these numbers. Reflections, I'm also going to use lumen. Under path tracing, I'm going to set the samples to 10 for now. That's actually just going to speed up our, our viewport. I'm going to turn on our denoiser, but before we render, I'll make sure to turn it off. And for now, I'm not going to worry about any of these other settings. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to path tracing. This is where setting the, the path tracing to 10 samples really helps because the default 2048 it takes it a while for it to render. You can see the, the progress bar down here. And that's okay. I mean, as we get closer to final render, we'll need to see that sort of stuff. But setting this number to something low will allow it to render and then denoise pretty quickly. And you can go lower. Let's see what happens with one. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty murky with one. And it actually slows down my viewport because it doesn't know what to do. <laughs> because it's trying to denoise every frame as we're moving instead of that. So I think you have to have it set to probably at least five. Let's see what happens with two. Two's okay. So 
you play with this however you want. I'm going to set it to 10 for now. I'm going to turn off all my sky stuff and then turn on my HDRI backdrop. I want to see what that looks like. So the backdrop, I can bring this down a little bit. So the backdrop looks okay. In the backdrop, there's a skylight. And if you search for effect and turn this off, this is important because right now, with it on, you're getting two sources of light. So the HDRI is lighting it and this skylight is lighting it. So you need to uncheck this light. This is why I set this all up at the beginning so that I don't have to think about it <laughs> when I come back. Another thing I'm going to do is press the tilde key to enter a command. You can also go down here to the bottom. And I'm going to paste this command in, r.streaming.poolSize equals 8,000. This increases the texture streaming pool to 8,000. If you are on a 20, 80 or higher, I think 8,000 is fine. In this case, I'm on a 30, no, in this case, I'm on an A6000, which I can handle even more than that. But it's just 1,000 is the default, and that's just not enough. Just take my word for it. So the last thing I might do here is set up a folder structure that will be consistent across all my projects. I haven't really finalized what that's going to be, so I'm not going to do it in this video. But that's something that you should do if you have a specific way you like to work. You have a materials folder, a textures folder, etc. You should definitely set those up now. It'll just help you get your project off to the right start. The last step is to simply restart so that everything that you've enabled, turned on and turned off, can be applied. And that should set us up to be pretty close to where we want to be for a default project. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one.